everyone welcome to our march book club favorites event this month we're discussing expiration dates from new york times best-selling author rebecca searle today we are joined by the author herself we are also joined by our marketing expert carlin hickson and our publicity expert fallon kirby to help lead the conversation before we get into our discussion i want to let everyone watching know three lucky viewers could win a copy of expiration dates to enter for your chance to win, just leave a question for us in the comment section of this video, and we will do our best to answer as many questions as possible live on screen today. And now on to book club. Rebecca, thank you so much for joining us. Can Thanks you for having me. Oh my gosh, we're thrilled to have you aboard. <laughs> Would you mind telling us a little bit about expiration dates? Sure. Expiration dates, um, casually staged behind me here. <laughs> is the story of Daphne Bell. Daphne, every time she meets a man from the time she was like first dating, she receives a slip of paper with his name and a number on it. And that number is the exact amount of time they will spend together. So the book opens and for the first time she receives a slip of paper and the number is blank. And what does it mean? Um, it is a story about what it means to be single in your 20s, but I think probably more specifically in your 30s and fate and free will and the universe and all of those small things. So that's expiration dates. All the things that you all are the greatest things. at. Um, we're just so excited. Fallon and I are really excited to talk to you today. Um, I know our book club readers and viewers are too. Um, expiration dates is just honestly such a gift to your readers and to, and to new readers who haven't yet read you. I think that it is truly a love story for everyone to just savor and reread and share with their book clubs and their moms and their friends. And um, so thank you. Thank you for writing it first off. Um, we love we love new Rebecca Searle novels. Um, so we have some questions that we yeah. just want to jump right into um, about expiration dates. The first um, is about the setting, which you're so great. It's setting the stage at putting readers, you know, in, in the place that you want them to be situated. And it's set in LA. Um, you include some beautiful descriptions, um, and the city really does kind of become its own character in the novel. Uh, what is it about L.A. that made you want to center the book there? Well, I think that, first of all, I went to college here, and I lived in L.A. I went to USC, and I hated it. Like, <laughs> I needed to be where the serious people were and the serious people were in New York and I was never, ever going to move back to Los Angeles and, you know, never say never because life unfolds. Yeah. And 
I did five years ago. And my Lo the Los Angeles that I belong to now is so different than the one that I knew then. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to reflect it because I have fallen in love with the city so much over the last five years. And honestly, probably the five years before that, I had a television show that was shooting out here called Famous in Love. And I would come out for like a meeting and I would end up staying for six weeks. Like I just, I liked that I had a car to put my groceries in and yeah. I like it wasn't freezing. And I'm so sorry to be talking to you too about this, but anyway. Um, <laughs> But I think more broadly speaking, you know, places really become kind of a hallmark of how I write. And, you know, I think that originated from my books, The Dinner List and In Five Years, because I was so enamored of New York City. Like, I loved it so much. That city had my heart um, that it naturally found its way into my books because part of what I was writing was the love story I had with the city. And and then One Italian Summer, it's like you can't write about Italy and not write about place. Yeah. Like you want to, you know, taste the salt air and the pasta and the tomatoes and all of those things. And so, and, and now I find that like part of my writing process actually is orienting myself like very deeply in the place that I want to talk about. And so this time that place is Los Angeles. You do it so beautifully. And I just have to say truly from one Italian summer, just speaking on Italy, I feel like so many people literally needed to, and actually did take that trip to Positano after reading it because you just, you know, you just put us, put the readers exactly where you are and where your characters are. And um, it, yeah, beautiful, beautiful novels. My favorite thing when people go and visit, I mean, Italy is extreme, although like, yes, I know people are making that pilgrimage and it really tickles me. But, um, you know, I think the other nice thing is that all of the restaurants, all of the places, the parks, the hikes, whatever it may be, coffee shops, in all of my books are real. I mean, I can't really speak to the dinner list in five years anymore because in a post-COVID world, a lot of those places have closed down in the city, but some of them are still open. And and I really like, and you know, we, we obviously, we did a few special editions of this book and one of them has like an actual itinerary of Los Angeles, which is really fun. Oh, yes, we love them all so much. And similar to your backlist as well, you just write from a place of, you know, where you are and just kind of how you're experiencing the world. And what we love about expiration dates is how Daphne, we see her in all different stages of her life, almost how we have in your backlist and your previous novels. Why is it so important for you to include that, especially with Daphne? Well, I think, you know, this book really is about what it means to be single. And I wanted to talk about what it means to be single in your 20s and then also your 30s, because they are, at least for me, they were very different experiences. Um, I think that in your 20s, like the search is a little bit more universal in a way and and perhaps like less pressing in a certain sense although like I from the time I was 22 was always like where is he like it was crazy I was, <laughs> I was like obsessively looking for him way too young probably but um but then I think you enter your 30s and that question changes and at least for me I, I you know I started working on myself a lot and what actually do I need and is my vision for you know for the future the right one for me, all of those questions. And so I really wanted to, I wanted to be able to show like the breadth of her romantic experience, you know, and also not for nothing. I really see, I was single for a really long time. It's no secret. I didn't meet my husband until I was almost 37, 36. I don't know. But I, um, I really saw looking back, like all of my different relationships and dating experiences as lessons in a way, like things that I had to learn. By the way, even when I was like, it's enough already, I feel like I've learned this lesson 17 times. Like, where is he? Looking back, they were all slightly different. And I think they got me to where I needed to be in my own personal journey. And I see the chapters for Daphne is very much the same. They are all lessons for her. Um, and I, it was important for me to, to get to represent that. And they, they, you know, they happened for her over the course of like 20 years, which yeah, is and that's so much fun. And I love when you're talking about your journey and how you've gotten here, because one of my favorite items was that you and your husband have actually emailed in the past. And now that how that life comes back full circle. And so you, you know, you really just don't know uh, no. what, what life has in store, which is so wonderful. Was there a particular scene of Daphne's that was more fun to write than the others or one that really sticks out to you now? Well, I think that when it comes to character, Hugo and Daphne just had like such a great banter, so much fun together. And I really like all of the scenes of the two of them. I just love writing. They like left off the page. But there's one chapter um, called Stuart and I won't spoil the time. Um, but that chapter, I don't know about fun, but it like really hit 
because I think that if you've been dating, you understand what that chapter is and what it feels like. Um, so maybe that one. Yes. Love that. Um, we actually do have some audience questions coming through. So I just wanted to kick it over to some of those too. So yes. uh, Sanyi asks, how many of the romances were based off of your experiences or your friends' experiences? Oh, um, well, I mean, listen, none of, none of the, none of the, um, none of the people in the book are based off of anybody that I dated necessarily, but yes, like the quality, I think of some of the relationships are similar to ones that I have had, because I think Daphne and I had similar lessons to learn. Um, but they're all also like really tailored to the book. So I don't really know if I could say, I will say the one person, well person that's entirely based off of somebody in real life is the dog Murphy. He's my friend, Morgan Matson's dog. And he exists in real life. He is fully a 1940s gentleman traveling the body of a dog. So, so Murphy for real. And everybody should go and look at Rebecca's Instagram from yeah. last night and you can see who Murphy is. And I just want to pet him. A He's lot. so cute. Buddy, yeah, please go 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 check it out. I have like a whole carousel of Murphy. Oh, we love God. the real I life. Love I love yeah, the real life dog in Spo. That's right. amazing. Oh my gosh, it mm -hmm. is so sweet. Mm -hmm. Um, but basing characters off of people you may or may not know, dogs included, Sandy wants to know, is Daphne based on anybody you know? And do you ever think there might be a sequel to expiration dates? I would love Ooh. to hear from maybe even a different point of view. What are you thinking there? Well, is Daphne based on other, anybody I know? No, my protagonists are never based off of anybody I know. I think they're all facets of me. I actually did an event at Diesel Books here in Los Angeles on Tuesday with my very dear friend, the novelist Jessica Knoll. Um, and she said to me, she's like, I think that Daphne is the least like you of any protagonist you've ever met. And I was like, well, that's offensive because she's definitely <laughs> the coolest I have ever written. <laughs> She is, she's a real, she has like a particular energy and spirit and she is very cool and, and, yeah. and holds herself in, in a particular way in the world. I think that I like don't necessarily have, but they're, they're all facets of me, I think in a way, um, sequel. No, I never think about doing a sequel for my books. I mean, again, never say never, but I, I'm. I am a fan of like a somewhat happy ending, but not a finish ending. Cause I think that that's how life is. So it's like, life's going to continue yeah. on from there and we don't necessarily know what it is. And yeah. um, I've never thought about doing it. I've never, I've never thought about anybody's journey that I've left. Like I've never thought about what happens to Sabrina after dinner or what happens to Danny after 2025. Like I've never thought about it before. So, um, you know, maybe in 10 years when I'm like really hard up for ideas. <laughs> I'll consider it, but not right now. Um, another question. So from Denise, was expiration dates always the title? I love that question, Denise. Yes, it was always the title. All of my books have always only had one title and the title came from the inception. Like I think, I think a lot of, in a lot of ways, the title really helps me distill down what the book is about. Um, and it almost helps me in the writing process. And so in five years was in five years in the first draft. Wanted to actually one Italian summer had a little bit of a different title to start because I wasn't sure how much of it would have to do with the mom. And I think it, it had a little bit of a different title, but then I quickly understood that it was one Italian summer and expiration dates was, was from the jump. I love that title. Okay. Yes. Yes. And another audience question from Anya who loves magical realism in your books, which we all do. We cannot get enough. Yes. What is it about magical realism, realism that inspires you? Um, I think that magical realism is like a way to, to cut to the quick of an idea faster and get to explore something um, on a more like meaningful and deeper level. Um, like, I think you could tell a story about a woman who was a serial dater and meet somebody and isn't sure if he's the one, you know, and has this like kind of complicated relationship with her, with her like best friend and whatever it is. But for me, it was, it's really interesting to see a woman who has a little something that we don't, maybe we, that we have metaphorically, you know, I mean, I think we all enter relationships different. I entered every relationship thinking like, maybe this is the one, you know, and like, maybe this is who I am. Like, maybe this is who I meant to be. Um, I sort of like took on a little bit of a different character with every relationship that I had. And, um, but I definitely thought, okay, well, maybe this could be it. And I think it's interesting. It was interesting for me to write somebody who knew, 
Um, and what that means, because I think on the one hand, you can be really present for what an experience is meant to be like, okay, you get three months, like, let me, let me let this be what it needs to be for me, what it's meant to be for me, it's not going to be everything. But then on the other hand, obviously, you never fully invest. And so um, that was just, it was just compelling and interesting to me. And I often find that magic allows me to just like open up an otherwise sort of like mundane idea and make it bigger and make it more complicated and make it deeper. Yeah. I love that explanation. That's awesome. Um, Jennifer said she's a teacher and she loves to ask if there are any teachers who inspired you to write. Oh, yes. I mean, I don't think I would be a writer if it weren't for my teachers. Um, Miss Kelly Levitt in the fifth grade, who <laughs> first told me that like I was like, you know, actually had a knack for this and started helping me enter writing competitions when I was in middle school. And I won some like poetry workshop. Like I was always, and after that, I was always on the hunt to try to get like published in little school journals or what have you. And then um, the incredible novelist, Marianne Wiggins was my professor in college and just like opened up the world for me. Um, and yeah, she, she was amazing and is amazing. And I definitely, I don't, I would, I don't, would not be a writer if it weren't for the teachers that I had, I think who encouraged me along the way for sure. Yeah. And I think that goes to say about most things in our lives, right? Our teachers, we couldn't have gotten to where we are without them. So we adore you all. Yes. Holly, yes. Holly would like to know, do you have any input in the cover design? And I would love for you, Rebecca, to also expand a bit on that and talk to us about the font choice of all of your titles. If you look on your backlist, it, it's very familiar. It's very familiar here. I'll bring it up to the, yes, we, they all have the same font and it's our incredible designer, Lewan's handwriting actually. Yes. Um, so she, she draws it by hand. I'm trying to see if I have in five years anywhere. No, but you can see one Italian summer right behind. She, that's her handwriting. Um, and so every color, every cover, excuse me, is just like very personal in that way. And I love it. Um, and I, and I just, I love the font so much. I think when we started with expiration dates, we were all nervous. We were like, oh, is expiration? It's a quite a long word going to be able to fit on the cover, but it worked out. Um, and then I think, you know, place, like we sort of originated this conversation talking about place in my books has become important for the covers to orient you, the reader, as to where we are, you know, like what, what place we're going to explore, what journey we're going to take you on this time around. And so I love that we have that like, um, that like just beautiful LA kind of like iconic street with the palm trees. Um, and I also didn't want, it leads up into the mountains, into the Hollywood Hills, because this is a book about Los Angeles, but it's not a book about the beach. Um, there are different things. This is really a book about uh, like West Hollywood in a way. And kind of, again, like the Los Angeles that I'm familiar with and one that I don't feel like we get to see represented that much. I think a lot of times when we talk about LA, we talk about Malibu or we talk about yeah. Hollywood. And this book is neither of those things. Um, and the pink I just, I really loved because I feel like this was a moment for us to really in, lean into the fact that this is a romance. Um, like, yes. a, I mean, um, I don't know about traditional romance. I know that that's a more complicated topic, but it is a role, you know, for me, it is a romance. It is not like a mother daughter love story or best friend love story. Like it is actually um, like a romantic romance. And um, so it was, it was fun to kind of just like lean into the feminine of that. I think uh, we all had fun with it. And then the notes are just so beautiful cascading down the page. Yeah. They're stunning. And the spines all next to one another. It just looks so beautiful with all the color options. Does. They look so pretty all together. Yeah. Agree. Um, I do want to remind everybody who's listening. We do have a giveaway that is coming, uh, that yeah. is ongoing right now. So three lucky viewers, it could be you, uh, could win hardcover copy of ex expiration dates by dropping a question into the video, and sorry, into the comment section of this video. So make sure that you do that. And thank you to yeah. those who have already. Um, we have another question from Vesna. Do you have any authors that inspire you? Oh, yes, plenty. Um, it's so funny. I've been on book tour for the last two weeks. And of course, obviously, everybody asks you like what you're reading. And the way that when people ask me this, is like, I've never read a book in my entire life. <laughs> like, I cannot remember anything. But I'll talk about a few that I've read lately that I've really loved. Um, I really love Sharkheart. And I'm blanking on I'm blanking on the author's name, forgive me, but also magical realism, much more metaphoric than what I do. I absolutely loved it. Um, I'm reading I love Adele Waldman. The Love Affairs of Nathaniel P for me is like one of the 
quintessential books that I recommend to people. And I, I think it's because like, I'm so fascinated by the way she can build a character. Really, that book is really a character study. Um, and I will go back to it a lot to think about how I build characters. She has a new novel out called Help Wanted that I'm reading now. Um, so many. And I'm lucky enough also to have like dear author friends. My my girlfriend, Jen Smith, is an amazing author. She wrote um, The Unsinkable Greta James. And so I'll run things by her and so many. I mean, my, you know, I'm sure all of us, like there's like this many books on my name. <laughs> the stack never ends. <laughs> yeah, definitely at all times. And we have another question from Sandy, which I'm actually interested to hear the answer to this one as well. There were so much of your strength in this book too came through the male characters and how you captured them. To what do you attribute that knack? I love that. I love that question. Um, so there are two kind of male leads in this book. And I really, you know, I guess on on its head, you could call one like the bad boy and one the good guy, but I, I really kind of reject that notion. And so I find that what helps in writing male characters is to complicate them, to make them a little bit of both and also other things. Like Hugo is not, you know, Hugo has a narrative that has made him the way that he is. And also he is not entirely those ways. He has other ways too. And similarly, I think Jake is somebody who has a past that is has allowed him to have a little bit more um, sort of like understanding and depth and perspective when it comes to life. So I think for me, thinking about how to make them multidimensional and also thinking about where they come from, um, thinking about what has happened to them over the course of their lives. Because at this point in my career, I write, I write people who are in their 30s, so they, they have history, you know, and um, why they are the way they are. And and then like how they show up differently for our main character, mm -hmm. uh, how they kind of give her different things and 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 why all of that matters. Um, so that's a little bit about how I how I how I built them. And that's so nice. Thank I like I really like that question. Yeah. And it was so fascinating, right? You almost as a reader can kind of see bits and pieces of yourself through those male characters and past relationships, you know, in different ways. So definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, Bonnie would like to know what drink would you pair with this novel? Because the pink opens up a lot of possibilities. Ooh, what drink would I pair with this novel? I mean, I feel like sparkling rosé is, is like too obvious a choice. Daphne drinks a lot of Oh my God, now I now I, I just finished a new drop of a book and now I'm like, what does she drink? Is it gin or vodka? But I think she I think it's like I think it's like vodka soda or like vodka on the rocks with lime. Mm -hmm. She likes like a clean drink. So whatever whatever she whatever the, her drink is in the book is what I would pair with it. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it's like it's like it's like kettle on the rocks with lime, which is yeah. like very cool girl drink. <laughs> like very cool girl I drink. I remember when I was young enough to consume those. I <laughs> Could not be me. Um, and I already know the answer to this question, so I'm so excited for you to share it. Susan wants to know, let us know about any specific rituals you have as to when, where, and how you write. Oh, Susan, I am, the truth is, I am not precious about when, where, and how I write. I think that if I were, I'd probably get a lot less done. And um uh, so I write everywhere. I write at home a lot. Like I'll write in my office, which is where I am now. Um, I'll write at the kitchen table. I write at coffee shops sometimes. The most important thing for me is that I get 2000 words a day done when I'm actively drafting a book. It doesn't matter when it happens. Um, and I will actually like the, the reviews on, on, on this, process have been like very um, conflicting. Um, I did an event with Jody Pico who called it entirely unhinged. So <laughs> so just take that with a grain of salt. But I stop at exactly 2000 words, not every day, occasionally, like you're really in the zone. And there's something that you're like, really trying to reveal and say, and you keep going. But for the most part, I stop at 2000 words a day, which means I don't write 2003. I don't write like, you know, 999. Nine, nine. Like I really 
Um, I stop at 2000 words because I find for me, it's so much easier to pick up the next day in the middle of a sentence, in the middle of a paragraph, in the middle of a chapter and finish that out. And then you're already on to the next idea than it is to sit down with a blank page and be like, okay, now I have to come up with like a whole other idea. That's too much work for me. So better to leave off and just finish the idea and then you're, and then you're on to the next. Um, so that's like, I think that's the most interesting thing to share about my writing process. And I, and probably also my writing advice. I love that. It doesn't have to be 2000, by the way, it could be 500, but. Yeah. Every time I hear you say that, it encourages me to write even 10 words in my Yes. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> happened. Completely. Exactly right. Um, Deanna said, I love all of your books. Was there one that you enjoyed writing most? Was there one that I enjoyed writing most? I like that question because people will ask me what my favorite book is and that one I can't answer. Um, I think I'm going to, I will answer a parallel question to this one, which is which book taught me the most in writing it. And I think that that was far and away expiration dates. I, you know, for a really long time, I wanted to write about the search for love because I felt like I had a lot to say about it. I had experienced so much of it personally and I really, I wanted to share it, but I didn't know how the story was supposed to end because I didn't know how my story ended. And I wrote my editor, and this is in the acknowledgments of this book, I wrote my editor, the wonderful Lindsay, who we all work with and love, um, in like the beginning of 2021, honestly, while I was still writing One Italian Summer, and I said, I think I want my next book to be about the search for love, and I think if I write it honest, he'll be there at the end of it. And I ended up meeting my husband three months later, and I felt like I really had to like I had to just still down what this was because even now I've only been married six months. Like we've only been together for two years, but my, I'm in a different story now. Like my life has changed. It's different. And so I'm really happy that I got to pay tribute to this when I did. And, um, and I really, I, I loved getting to put all this down and I really have loved getting to talk about it um, and getting to like share with women because I have a lot to say about, about that journey. Yeah. And it's been so amazing. You're coming down off of a whirlwind of a book tour. Yes. Do you have a favorite part? Are you just thrilled to be back home? Talk to us a bit about that and what it's like being on the road, because there's so much more uh, to a novel than just writing it. Yeah. there. It's so true, Valen. Like there really is. Um, and I think that I, I like both parts. Like I really do. I like getting to go out into the world and talk to readers. And, and I think for me, the really special thing about this tour in particular is that we have so much more to talk about now mm -hmm. um, because there is in five years and there's dinner list and there's one Italian summer. And I think with every book that comes out, people like really, really lovingly go back and read, you know, my backlist. And so when now when we have a book event, it's not just about expiration dates. It's about all of them. And we get to talk about all of them. And people share such like personal and intimate and beautiful stories with me about their own lives. And um, and I, I just love it. I love that we have that like now like breadth of experience and we have these like multiple books that are touchstones. So that was really that was really special about this tour in particular. Yeah, I think we have time for one final question um, from Bonnie. Um, she said, "Has as you were writing this book about the dating men with expiration dates, were there any characters that you wished had a little bit more time? Oh, that's a really good, that is a really, really good question. Um, yes. I mean, I think that, I think that it's, it's an interesting question because I got to set the expiration dates. So if I wanted them to have more time, I guess I could have given them more time. But I sort of I sort of found that there was a natural rhythm then to how the book started being built. And there were certain things that took two years to learn and certain things that you could, you know, could learn on a long weekend. And I think that in the writing process, I'm so in Daphne's experience that I I feel her wanting more time. Like there were, there were men that were like, oh, why does this have to end? This is so good. Or there's, there could be so much more here, even if it was six months, even if it wasn't forever. Um, but I was very pleased then when I came to the end about how long everybody took and, and what her road looked like and where it landed her. 
Well, I have to say too, just as like, I don't know, maybe my own life, maybe not everyone felt this way. And maybe my husband wouldn't love this answer, but I feel like we all have people that we really enjoyed, but for whatever reason, they weren't our person. Um, And they're great people. And maybe they could have gone on for a little bit longer, but they, in the long run, they weren't that like perfect person. So I felt like it made it more real that there were people that you liked or thought could like work in certain ways, but just weren't the one yeah. in that way. Yeah. Um, well, I'm popping back in just to thank you guys for such an incredible discussion. I have to say, I I shouldn't say favorite, but this is one of my favorite uh, discussions I've ever gotten to sit in and listen to. I really enjoyed it. Um, so I thank you guys so much for showing up. And before we go, I do just want to give one last reminder that you can still post a question in the comment section to be entered to win our expiration date sweepstakes. Make sure you're keeping up with Rebecca and you can check out that pup by following her on Instagram. And finally, Carlin Fallon and Rebecca, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you guys have a lovely afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Carlin Fallon. Love you guys. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you, guys.